This is indeed a very curious world. I was the first man to make an automatic gun. It's astonishing how quickly this invention put me on the very pinnacle of fame. But had I invented anything other than a killing machine, very little would have been said of it. to give evidence in a court of justice, we are required to swear in some conventional form that we will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It is then the business of the lawyers to see to it that we do not tell the whole truth. I shall have to observe the same rule in preparing this little account of the events of my life. I shall tell the truth, and nothing but the truth. But it would not be advisable for me to tell the whole truth, as it might entangle me in numerous lawsuits, which I wish to avoid. eight years old, we were living in Maine. At that time, at least, three quarters of the country was covered in primeval forest. Consequently, trees were not considered of much value. There was a large balsam fir standing all by itself in Mr. Lucian French's pasture, and I was very ambitious to fell this tree. Thank <laughs> you. 
There were no rats in Maine in those days. Except in seaport towns. But the mill, like all other grist mills, supported a swarm of mice. I used to make a few box traps on Sundays. The problem with these traps was that when it had caught a mouse, it was full and could not catch another until the first had been taken out. I therefore decided to make an automatic mouse trap, one that would wind like the spring of a clock and set itself a great many times. We had a butcher's knife made out of a mill saw file, and when I had ground this very sharp, I commenced operations, but found it a very tough job. However, I kept hacking away eight or nine hours a day for about a week, when it appeared to me that with very little more cutting the tree would fall. So I invited my sister, who was 18 months younger than myself, to come and see the sport. I worked vigorously, but the tree refused to fall and my little sister went to sleep. Many years later, I visited Maine, and while staying with my uncle, I took a shortcut through the woods to Mr. French's mill. When I emerged from the woods, I saw a very old man working in the fields, and as I approached him, he looked up, stared at me, and finally walked to greet me. He seized me by the hand and said, I believe it is Hiram. He started to laugh, and when I asked him what he was laughing about, he said, You are such a curious kind of boy. Oh, 
fighting line is your job as well as mine. If the country's call won't wake them, it's the country's right to take them. For we've got to smash. Eventually, I succeeded in making a trap that was quite automatic in its action. The body was made of white, crinkly basswood, which is very beautiful when varnished. The mouse walked in and, touching the bait, shut himself in. This frightened him. He would try to escape and did escape into a small cage but in doing so, he set the trap for the next customer. I had cut a deep groove all around the tree, but there were five or six inches still left that were very difficult to get out. The next day, I ground the knife very sharp at the point so it could be used like a chisel, but the tree still refused to go down. I worked on the job until four in the afternoon when I heard a cracking at the point of the knife and, looking up, I finally saw the big tree toppling over. This was the proudest moment of my long and eventful life. Nothing has since equaled it. Oh, 
fighting line is your job as well as mine. If the country's call won't wake them, it's the country's right to take them. For we've got to smash the Huns, we want shells and we want guns, and men to fire them and to make them. We But I must have been very much like other boys, I said. No, not a bit, he replied. There was never another boy like you. On one occasion, you had a big bottle fly by both wings. Gradually, you pulled them apart until one of them gave way. Then you said in a very thoughtful manner, this fly's wings are not put in even. If they had been, they both would have pulled out at the same time. I plead guilty to being a chronic inventor. I started while I was very young and have kept it up ever since. Before I invented the Maxim gun, I was a man of peace. But one day in Vienna, I met an American. He said to me, Maxim, if you really want to make money, invent something that will enable these Europeans to cut each other's throats with greater ease. That is what they want.